Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Moe K, Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today we're back with another English whiskey. It's from the English Whiskey Company, a distillery located in Norfolk, down in England. And I believe it's the oldest registered English distillery we have today. It is, yeah, an interesting one. I haven't tried that much whiskey from them before, but I'm very excited about this one. This has been matured in second fill Cabernet Sauvignon casks. It was filled on in November 2014 and bottled in August 2020. So it's a very new release. I think it retails for around 60 pounds. But it's a little bit tricky to find actually. It says at 46% ABV, it's unpeated and is there anything else? It's batch number three in 2020. 1,507 bottles. This is also one of the bottles that I got from my Summerton Whiskey Club membership, uh, which is very exciting. I always forget that I have signed up to it and then suddenly a bottle arrives and it's just a fun surprise. But let's have a little look on the nose. I always think it's fun with wine casks because you never know what they're gonna do to a whiskey. But let's start by having a look. Ooh, how enticing. Quite rich nose straight away. Tiny bit like alcoholic raspberry jam, perhaps. And red apples, because it has this fresh note. Fairly sweet, but also a bit woody. It kind of makes me think of a chilled dry rosé wine because it has this kind of it's not quite red wine aromas and it's not quite that kind of white wine aromas you might get from fino for example because i the two fino matured whiskies i've tried recently the cajoman and the tomatin have had that kind of white wine influence but this is more somewhere in between that rosé almost like Raspberries or strawberries perhaps, but also a little bit woody and a little bit dry. It certainly has that fresh note, which is why, why it makes me also why it also makes me think of red apples. It's a little bit cold in here, as usual. Maybe I should just start by warming these up, but the idea with these ones, because of course I am very very fortunate to be able to try a lot of whiskey and especially releases like this that are brand new and I know this is a neck pour but I just kind of wanted to give an idea of what my experience is firsthand with the whiskey because a lot of people that buy a bottle they will have the first experience with the neck pour but just be aware that the first pour from your bottle is going to be very fresh and sometimes it's almost a bit too aggressive but then as you get through the bottle, because of course your, your whiskey often softens a bit with the age in the bottle, it doesn't age further, but as oxygen gets in, it does something to the flavors, which is why you shouldn't keep it in the bottle for too long. Yeah, now there's a little bit more of the aromas coming out. That's just enhancing what I got before, I would say. A little bit more perfumed and floral. I don't know if you can hear the knocking that I can hear at the moment. Uh, we live in a flat with lots of noises. There is a guy who sings terribly uh, up to my right and sometimes people are knocking for no reason uh, or stomping or there's a woman who cries occasionally as well which is very sad. But yeah, if you hear those noises, I'm terribly sorry. I'll try and edit out. <laughs> but yeah, it's a bit like a floral raspberry tart now. I would say more raspberry than strawberry because raspberry is a little bit more nature-esque and almost a tiny bit more sour and strawberries are more this kind of sweetness. But okay, let's have a little look on the palette. Slunge it back. Ooh. 
I was expecting this to be quite dry straight away considering the nose had that little woody influence. I thought I would be, even though it was quite subtle in the nose, I thought it would be the most dominant thing on the palette, but I was wrong. This has a wonderful palette, I must say. It's um, a little bit like raspberry sweets, but also that kind of raspberry tart because it almost has a little bit of a, a malty note. That makes me think of kind of pie crust. And the finish is lovely. It's very pink. I thought this would be more of a a darker red colour in my head, but it's still that kind of rosy colour. But on the nose, it was more like a dry rosy. And I would still say it is, but on the palette, it's almost like a <laughs> colour wise, not quality wise, but like, um, what's it called? It's a rosy that is very affordable in the shops and it's very pink and it's very sweet. It's almost a bit more like that. It has a higher sweetness, but it also feels quite velvety and quite rich in a very nice way. It feels very soft and it does have a woodiness, but the woodiness makes this with this kind of raspberry no, that just makes it really lovely and very smooth and makes it feel more juicy than dry. I wouldn't say it's overly fresh, but it has almost more of a dense note to it. Yeah, it's a, a very interesting one. Sits quite nicely at this alcohol strength. Could do with maybe a few drops of water. But I'm very happy drinking it. It's it's very nice. It's um I I was anticipating it to be drier. Almost like a raspberry mousse. Mousse? I don't know. <laughs> Someone said uh, that I shouldn't say that something's like a chocolate mousse, but now I'm going to say it's like raspberry mousse. But I think it's just because, of course, in Sweden it's more, almost more common that you'll have mousses, mies, in your garden than to have mousse. And the more I say that word, the weirder it sounds. Um, you know what I mean. It's uh, a dessert. <laughs> yeah, because it just has a kind of fluffy raspberry note. Fluffy raspberries. Interesting. Almost a bit orangey as well. Like orange and raspberry fluff. I think there's just enough woodiness to make it a little bit more robust and two-dimensional. But not so it overpowers. I think it's a very balanced whiskey, which is very nice. And yeah, it just makes me like wine casks even more. I would love to do one day a tasting where you try a Cabernet Sauvignon next to a whiskey that's been matured in the same kind of wine. So yeah, I wonder if these are Portuguese Cabernet Sauvignon casks, because I had a look before online and I could see that they'd done a previous 11 year old, I think that was matured in Portuguese Cabernet Sauvignon casks. So I wonder if these are the same type of casks or if they're different. Whatever they are, they are very nice. I've said that a lot, I think, very nice. But I, I yeah, I'm very, I'm enjoying this a lot, which is great, because now I can just sit and sip this. <laughs> it's almost feeling like a summer whiskey. So I don't know if I should save it for next summer, or if we should maybe just, uh, yeah, sip it through the winter. I would of course love to hear what you think. Have you tried any whiskey from the English Whiskey Company? Have you tried perhaps this one, the Cabernet Sauvignon, or the previous one, or any of their other range? Because I know they do both peated and unpeated whiskies. Please put your comments in the section here below. I love hearing what you think. 
And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All the information is of course in the little section here below, as well as links to my website, my Patreon, my Instagram or my Teespring shop if you're curious about that. As always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing and I'm so grateful I have your support. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Sanjava, Skowala.